So, working on this kit, we all know that it looks good like this. <clears throat> it really does. I've been contemplating changing the colors, giving it maybe a camel pattern. Um, maybe changing the color all around. Something something more unique, um, something more uh, striking, but I really do like how it looks, the blue. Um, it has areas of separation which I can do two-tone colors, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, let's uh, look at the look at let's look at the mind for now. Um, we have two parts of this, which is fine. It's still one color, but then you have the back part here, which is one part, which can be a different color. And then you have the front part. The uh, that's another color. Um, this is, I believe, three parts there. In which case. Uh, let's see, go back to the other page. Should put some sort of marker on it. So even though you have this one big part bed here, you have two parts there. And I can't tell if it's a solid. You know what? No, I am looking at that. Okay. So that's actually one color right there. It, it, um, it, it's a lot of surface parts here. Not not a lot of armored parts that are separate in color and parts. I guess maybe when this was um, being constructed, they didn't think about uh, part separations using specific details. Not something that you would normally, uh, you know, you would see that on other kits, on other um, Kemper knockoffs. <laughs> and I know you guys are probably saying, why not scribe it? Well, it so happens that I do have a scribing tool, or a guide, called the Paneline Guide Straight Lines, which I got from Gundam Planet, and I'm going to probably utilize it on certain areas of the kit and see what I can do with it. I don't know completely if it's going to work. Um, some lines are in curvature. Neat. But... Well, that remains to be seen. Um, I think the one thing that I want to try is appreciating with the blue. And I think I, I have done that before with certain kits I remember where I painted the entire part, the blue part, black. Then I painted the, the middle part blue tone and then I, I, I lighten it up so um, unfortunately I thought I pulled one out here I thought I did where is it, is it over here? yep it's over here um, this is of course subject to change I'm not I don't think I'm going to be using Titan's blue one most likely I may end up using black but I'm going to use this as a, um, as a, you know, substitute for now. So, paint the entire armored blue parts black. And make sure it's nice and smooth. If I have to sand it down, you know, like uh, do a, 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 a wet sanding to remove whatever inconsistencies, I'll do it. But obviously I'll try to airbrush it the best I could. But once that's once the paint settles and it's dry, then we move on to the blue colors. Now I have I could have used um, I could use Moto. Moto has a is a very nice blue. I have finisher paints. Thinking of using that, but I forgot that I have this one. This is Cobalt. This is a lot striking. So I'm thinking of using this. And once that paint is settled, and then you see the little outlining of the of the appreciating, 
I highlight it a little bit more using uh, light blue. Now I'm thinking of maybe either using the light blue or actually that was it. <laughs> I thought I had another paint bottle here. No, but yeah, like highlighted this way. So that way um, you have the leading edges dark uh, in the main part of the blue and then highlighting of the light blue in the areas. What do you think of that? Maybe that would be a cool idea. Let me try that. Uh, <clears throat> the grayish tones, I have two grayish tones here. Um, I have the gray FS36, that's one, that could be a possibility. This is a lighter grayish tone, but it's almost white. And I'm kind of like favoring the like the waist area, this part here that holds up the, uh, the shotgun, the back part here, the knees back there, the joints where the arms are. I know that the the part under the arm that is more metallic, and it could be a combo. I may end up using some acrylic. I have this uh, metal, gunmetal color, which I believe is a little lighter, but I'm not completely 100% sure. I'll have to test this out. Again, substitute. With, of course, the possibility of maybe replacing... Uh, oh, all the... the so if, if not this, I may end up using finisher. Gunmetal, but this is actually light. Gunmetal is not completely light. It always comes out dark for me. I don't know why. I mean, I mix this up like crazy, and it still feels like it comes out too dark. So we'll keep that here for now. I could easily use Moto Yellow, pure yellow, or I could use MS Yellow. But regardless of whatever I use, whether it's this or this. I'll have to pull out a, um, one of my white paints, like, okay, right here, MS White, so I can paint the insides of the thrusters white, these parts, you know, white, and then paint it the yellow color, so that way it comes out nice. So we'll keep that there. Uh, considering that this is the only pink color and that's a mono eye, I think that's going to probably be already pink as well. Um, <clears throat> don't know for certain. The, the weaponry will be this color tone with a combination of this, or I'll do a mixture. We'll see where we go with that. Okay. I think that pretty much covers all that. I don't know what else I can find. But I'm not done yet with this. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm definitely looking into detailing it more. Um, not too much. Um, but, like, certain areas where I think you may, I may need to put some. Oh, I don't know. Um, putting on right now some photo etched parts you could say especially in the joint area here and here this one I can understand fine and maybe the knee uh, sorry the ankle sorry not, sorry not the ankle the knee but you can bear but the armored parts are kind of covering it That's another thing. All the armored parts will be painted uh, gunmetal. Yes. Uh, all the sorry, all the sorry, all the inner frame parts will be painted gunmetal. Um, let me see what I have here. Okay. Um, now, I know that there's this separation there. I don't know if something like this can be used. 
put that area in there. I'll measure that and test it out. The holes here, I have to see how it looks. I know it's chrome plated when you look at the, at the box. But what should I use? I have these high key parts. These little holes, these little um, nuts there. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's ten here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, right, that, that's a total of twelve. So I can't use this. I'm going to be short by two. By two. I have these that probably will work. Don't know. I think I should have the right amount of holes there. So I have these two. We have the that part there and that part here. And then I have this that can be used. Um, Remember that even though I'm showing you this, that doesn't mean I am going to use it. I have to see if, if, if it works or not. I collect so many photo -rich parts and I forget what I get or what I have. And if it will and if it will work. I don't know if, if I, so the one thing is, of course, for these, I wonder if I can put a mesh under it, because I have this mesh here, but I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. The, these are all subject to change, of course. I may not put photo edge parts to begin with, doesn't need it. I just want to make sure it's nicely detailed and looks nice, that's all. However, there is one last thing that I want to try. One last thing. And it's this. This is the uh, large heavy machine gun from the prototype Kemper. I really like that machine gun. I really do. <laughs> I've been looking online for this type of machine gun. In truth, that machine gun is similar to the MG42 that the Germans used during World War II. Um, and I actually ordered a 1-6 scale uh, machine gun like this. Uh, right? It, it, it's, it's cheap, you know, not too much. I don't know how soon I'll get it. But I want to get it and I want to see if it will work with this with some modifications to make it look like that gun. Surprisingly, there's only two kits out there that is prototype um, um, prototype Kemper. That is, I believe, a, a Robot Spirits version and a G-Frame unit coming out soon for like 50 bucks. Obviously, it's too small, both of them. But if I can get my hands on one of them, I can figure out how to detail one. I have actually a gun that may work as a frame. And if it does not, I can always scratch build it. Something uh, different. Something to utilize for this guy. Um, don't want to load it up with all weaponry, just that. And see where we go from there. Alright. Well, with that being said, that's what I'm going to do with this guy. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. And one last thing. If I can squeeze it in there. That mono eye looks very, very tempting for some light up work. Alright. With that being said, let's begin building Master Grade Kemper. Okay. I'm gonna 
place to frame this. Put it back here. Oops. Do that for now. There we go. I was uh, looking online, looking at the brief history of the Kempfer. And I don't mean in the series. I'm talking about overall in model building. And I was like looking for anything historical about it in regards to Bandai releasing other Kempfer kits, you could say. I mean, right now we have Master Grade Camper, High Grade Camper, the classic High Grade Camper, the Camper Amazing, SD Camper, and that's it. I could not find any limited kits out there under the Camper banner. I couldn't find any clear version, other than the fact that there was the, um, when they were doing the, the I think it was the 20th, 30th anniversary or something, when they were releasing the Master Gear kits with uh, part, you know, half armored parts, half clear parts. Um, there was a, a series of uh, limited kits like that, that the camper came out. But there was no metallic version of the camper. No clear plated version of the Kempfer. No gold plated, no nothing. Not even Expo kits. At all. I mean, I, I can imagine you would see uh, a clear, uh, an all clear version of Kempfer. Why hasn't Bandai touched up on that? I mean, it is. They, they missed the ball on that. Don't you think? I mean, we pretty much... I, I did the entire check on day long site. And, and obviously, the master grade I would not expect. The high grade, you would say, Oh, okay, yeah, there's a, there's a P-band version of this. Or there's a, uh, a, a, um, a Gundam base version of it. But no, I, I must. I'm, I know somebody's gonna tell me. Well, I got this, you know, and it came out in this year or whatever. And you know, comment it below. Let me know. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised that we have never ever gotten any other version of the Kenfer uh, Master Grade or High Grade for that matter. Hmm. Makes me want to buy another mass, uh, High Grade Kenfer. And don't talk about the Kemper Amazing. That that kit is uh, almost uh, non-existent. Nobody uh, nobody seems to have it, and if they do, it's cost a pretty penny. I think maybe Bandai should reissue the uh, the Kemper Amazing. Um, we are like I mentioned before. We are getting. Hold on a second. This thing's annoying me. There we go. We are getting the uh, prototype camper, but as a um, G frame FA line. And as a matter of fact, speaking of G frame, here's of course the G frame FA uh, camper and Gundam NT1 Alex full armor equipment set. So we get the kit itself and the armored parts to convert the Alex. Which, of course, I will work on this year. This will be a Kemper year, you could say. If I can get myself another high grade. There we go. Alright, so we got a lot of parts here. Let me just classify it by color. Probably caps will put it up here. Okay, this looks really nice. This is for this color tone, yeah. 
Then we have the blue. It's a turquoise blue color tone. And it goes here. Oops. Uh, no, I will go with that. And that. And then we have the split right there. Okay. Alright. Funny. Feels like I, I've seen more yellow parts here, but yeah. It's. Even though it's very few, I thought it would be more. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this orange. And this, and this color kind of makes me sick to my stomach for whatever reason. But obviously we're changing this up, making it different. Alright. Alright, let's put all these parts into a tray. Nice. Alright, here are all the parts separated by their individual colors. We have the blues. We have all the grayish blue type color tone you could say. But it's, yeah, it's more bluish than gray. But it's a, it's a, yeah in between there. This is a light gray and here's the dark gray which I may change up to more metallic color tone maybe gunmetal. Pretty much such the, 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 the norm with the with the uh, frame especially for under the well here's the thing that I'm, I'm noticing here because when you look at the Kempfer you have this tone color and then you have that which of course definitely would benefit a chrome tone which move away from me where is it and where did I put it? oh here it is so we have this and this so this is more of a chrome, this is a metallic tone, while this is the light blue tone. Now I mentioned before that I think maybe I can drill the, well, at first, photo edge parts may be a cool idea. But after reviewing it, depending on how this is formed and how it's closed, and if it's, if it's an empty, empty, yeah, empty cavity, and there's nothing there nudging around it, I could probably drill these holes out and use a wire mesh under it. That may be a cool idea to try. I'm seeing that for this, and I'm seeing it for the, this part here. Well, this one is already the back thrust, uh, the backpack um, has these holes, so that's how it's done. But, somewhere around here, like that. Alright, don't worry about it, I'll find it later on. We will be test fitting these parts here and there to see how it looks. I'm also, actually, let me go back to this. So these are the two parts that make up the shoulders. This one is without the spikes, while the other one is with. But you have this nice little detailed seam line that goes right all the way around. I don't know if this is something that can be put on top of the the shoulder frame or you have to actually put it in and it holds in. Um, actually, let me, let me look at that right now. Alright, so there is a structure there that goes in and it's actually to hold up the uh, yellow parts for the thrusters. That's cool. And there is a... Oh, okay. So, cool. I don't... I, at first I thought maybe it was one of those parts that was going to go over one other part. And then you're going to be screwed. 
this one can be separate. So that is actually a good, good idea. If one would argue, could this be updated for a 2.0? I mean, chances are, if they would have detailed it like half part like that and the other half like that, maybe, maybe the solid tone would be fine, and then these would be separate, but then that would be a complete redesign or modify of the, of the shoulder. I can honestly say that if they decide to make a 2.0, so everything will be all together. The part goes here, pushed in like that. This is a separate part going in there. These uh, blisters is a separate part. So you don't have to worry about a seam line here or here or around here because that is going to be annoying not only to glue but sand it down to flip to make it flush that's my first um, fix right there if uh, if they're going to do a 2.0 kemfer that's the first thing they should fix okay We're gonna go through each and every one of these and see what we must what the ba um, Bandai would do to explore the possibility of turning it into a 2.0. And if anybody has some ideas or comments, please share, of course. So let me take my time cleaning up all the extra parts, or extra plastic, um, sanding it down, and then we'll explore other things.